Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 13, The Behaviour of a Perfect Person. Text number 6. Nabinan dead through Vamrityum Adru Vambasya Jivitam Kalam Param Pratikshita Bhutanam Prabhavabhyayam Nabinan dead through Vamrityum Adhruvam basya jivitam Kalam param pratikshita Bhutanam prabhavapyayam Nabinan dedruvam rityum Adhruvam basya jivitam Kalam param pratikshita Bhutanam prabhavapyayam Nabinan detruvam rityum Bhutanam Prabhavapyayam Nabinan Dedruvam Rityum Adruvam Basya Jivitam Kalam Param Pratikshita Bhutanam Prabhavapyayam Nabinan dedruvam rityum Adruvam vasya jivitam Kalam param patikshita Bhutanam prabhavapyayam Nabinan dedruvam rityum Adruvam basya jivitam Kalam param pratikshita Bhutanam prabhavapyayam Ladies Can't see it Okay Fair enough Na, Na, not, Abhinandet, one should praise, Dhruvam, sure, Mrityum, death, Adhruvam, not sure, Va, either, Asya, of this body, Jivitam, the duration of life. Kalam, eternal time. Param, supreme. Pratikshita, one must observe. Bhutanam, of the living entities Prabhava manifestation Apyayam disappearance since the material body is sure to be vanquished and the duration of one's life is not fixed Neither death nor life is to be praised. Rather, one should observe 
the eternal time factor in which the living entity manifests himself and disappears. Hmm. Purport. The living entities in the material world, not only at the present, but also in the past, have been involved in trying to solve the problem of birth and death. Some stress death and point to the illusory existence of everything material, whereas others stress life, trying to preserve it perpetually and enjoy it to the best of their ability. Both of them are fools and rascals. It is advised that one observe the eternal time factor, which is the cause of the material body's appearance and disappearance, and that one observe the living entity's entanglement in the time factor. Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur therefore sings in his Gitavali Anadi Karama Hale Padi Bhavanarnavaj Hale Tari Bare Na Deki Upai. One should observe the activities of eternal time which is the cause of birth and death. Before the creation of the present millennium, the living entities were under the influence of the time factor. And within the time factor, the material world comes into existence and is again annihilated. Bhutva, Bhutva, Praliyate. Being under the control of the time factor, the living entities appear and die. Life after life. This time factor is the impersonal representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who gives the living entities conditioned by material nature a chance to emerge from this nature by surrendering to him. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmaye Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupakada Mahayam Dadati Svapadantikam Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum lang hayate garim yad kripa tamaham bande shi gurum dinatarinam.
So, we have a problem. The, the, the problem is material existence. Uh, and the fact that it is asat, temporary, under the influence of the, here it's mentioned, kalam param, the supreme personality of Godhead in the form of the time factor. That means everything in the material world has a, a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. And this time factor is merciless in that it, it grinds us all down. Right? We work hard to build things up, but in due course of time, everything is crushed. Everything is destroyed. And so as Prabhupada points out here, this leads people to think that ultimately everything is void. Like everything we see around us now, everything, even though it appears to be so permanent in another hundred years or in another thousand years or certainly in ten thousand years, none of what we see around us now will be in existence. It'll all be crushed by the time factor. Huh? So everything that is created is destroyed and ultimately reduced to nothing. And so we get this uh, a, a reaction to that, as Prabhupada says here. Some stress death and point to the illusory existence of everything material. Right? This is the Nivasesha Sunyavadi. Uh -oh. oh, okay, it's you. Uh, philosophy that ultimately uh, uh, everything is nothing. Right? Not, it's not difficult to arrive at that conclusion. Because everything we see, according to history, ultimately it's demolished. And so its presence is. Um, illusory. One minute it's here, it appears to be real, the next minute, gone. Never to be seen again. There are those who, the, 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 the karmis, if you like, they work hard, at least while they're alive and in in, in, in the present and looking forward to at least the immediate future, they work hard to try to preserve life so that it lasts forever. Or at least that's the, that's the ambition Prabhupada mentions here. There are others who stress life, trying to preserve it perpetually. No, this was this was um, this is epitomized by Hiranyakashipu. Right? He tried to get benedictions from Lord Brahma so that he wouldn't be killed here, he wouldn't be killed there, he wouldn't be killed by this one, he wouldn't be killed by another one. It's, a, it's the desire to live perpetually in the material world, despite the fact that the laws of material nature teach us very clearly that it's impossible. Still, there are those who try to create or to maintain life perpetually. And Prabhupada says here, enjoy it to the best of their ability. But Prabhupada says here, both of these camps or both of these philosophies, uh, the... the um, the proposers of which are fools and rascals.
It is advised that one observe the eternal time factor, which is the cause of the material body's appearance and disappearance. One of the problems with material existence and its temporality is that whilst we understand its temporary nature, we still, by dint of our identity, have a desire to live perpetually. Right? This is, this is uh, completely normal. And we have a desire to enjoy the nature of our identity is that we're eternal. Sat, jit, ananda, which is the very opposite of material existence. It's asat, temporary. It's achit, full of ignorance, and nirananda. It's miserable. But, Despite the fact that the material entanglement forces us into this state of ignorance, we still have the We still have the desire, we still have the awareness, we still have the uh, inclination to want to live perpetually. We want to be situated in a state of understanding how everything is working. We want to know, what, it, what am I here for? What is my purpose in life? What am I supposed to be doing? We, 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 we um, crave, maybe, we, we desire a, a clear and proper understanding of things and we want happiness, we want pleasure. So, um, uh, Prabhupada's pointing out here that rather than get absorbed in the material comings and goings of uh, life. Rather, one should observe the workings of the time factor. And one thing we're able to observe clearly in the midst of all of this coming and going is our personal identity. Right? We're not the body. We're traveling within a body and that body is always changing but we're that constant that is able to observe all of these changes. Right? This is a, a clear, a proper understanding of ourself and that we're being pushed by the time factor. Tehinos min yata dehe komaram jovanam jada tata dehantara praptis diras tatra na muyati. Under the influence of the time factor and under the influence of the material energy, we think, we think we're this body. But one who's able to step back, separate themselves from the workings of the material body and see themselves as somebody separate. You know, one of the reasons why we chant Hare Krishna is so that we can see ourselves, realize our identity. What is it? Pratyak uh, shavagamam damyam. Susukam kartam avyayam. The perfection of religion is the ability to see the self. Um, even that the word is here, pratikshita. 
to observe. And then when we're able to see ourselves as being the permanent or the, uh, 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 Prabhupada mentions in one of the purports of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the kutashta, that we're the steady or the stable or the, the, the dira, the sober, within the midst of all of these different changes, within the body. We're not the body, we're a spirit soul. And being able to observe the changes under the influence of the time factor, that's Krishna, we're able to see the cause of birth and death as coming from the workings of the Lord's material energy in the form of the time factor. This is one of the, one of the topics, one of the five topics of the Bhagavad Gita is time. How does time work? And one of the things that the time factor does is creates the bodies that we inherit or that we get. It allows us to stay for some time and then eventually it goes. And we have no control. Huh? One day we wake up and we realize... Here I am. Right? And then, and, and we, we don't know how we got this body. We don't even know why we deserve this body. We just, we have it. And it's a, it, 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 it's a source of, it can be a source of uh, enjoyment. So there are those who are working hard to enjoy and there are those who are fearful of it and the, and the, the, the sufferings and the pain and the ignorance that we experience covered by this, basically by the material energy. So if one, of, if one is able to step back from the workings of the material energy, that means being given an opportunity to see things as they are. The benefit of studying the Bhagavad Gita, the benefit of studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, the benefit of coming into the association of the devotees. We get an opportunity to understand how this material energy is working and how it conditions us. One day we think we're young. One day we think we're old. One day we think we're happy. Another day we're thinking I'm in distress. All as a consequence of our identification with this material energy. But when we come into the association of the devotees, when we get instruction from, the, from our spiritual masters, when we hear the teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita, then we're placed in a position where we can see the difference between the body and the workings of the time factor and are able to identify ourselves as something Separate. This is a, this is a great. This is a, um, a a great gift. A matchless gift. So. Um, be, uh, remaining absorbed in the material conception of existence is foolish. And trying to enjoy material existence is a sign, a Prabhupada says here, rascaldom. Right? Fools and rascals. One has to learn how to observe the time factor. Kalam param pratikshita.
Bhutanam, that's us, the living entities, right? Bhutas, we're all Bhutas. Or Jivatma, the Jiva. Prabhavapyayam, the coming into being and then the disappearance. This is all just the normal ebb and flow of material existence. Somebody is being born, you know, they have, in the, in the newspapers, they have at the, well, they used to, they have two sections, right? Or one section, it's called births, right? And deaths. So they have a listing for every day. Here's who's been born. Boop, 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 huh? And then, next page, here's everybody who's died. Here's who's come, here's who's gone. Huh? So, we should observe the workings of the time factor, the comings and goings under its influence, and not be bewildered by the coming and goings of the material energy, but rather concentrate on the, the kutasta, or the steady, the permanent. And the permanent is our very identity, our very self, the soul, who's seeing the changes. We're seeing the changes of material existence and if we're, if, if we're fortunate, we can step back from the workings of material energy and absorb ourselves in our true identity as the spirit soul. And, and uh, this, is, this is basically self-realization. And understand what the qualifications or what the qualities are of the soul. The material existence is um, relentless. You know, at, 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 well, at, at some point, it's not manifest. Right? The material energy is wound up and absorbed into the body of Mahavishnu. Right? And so, at times, it is not manifest. It is absorbed, Prabhupada says here, uh, before the creation of the present millennium, the living entities were under the influence of the time factor and within the influence of the time factor, the material world comes into existence and is again annihilated. So this is the breathing of Mahavishnu. Right? He breathes out and the universes are manifest initially in a seed form then they grow and expand and they're populated by Lord Brahma and the other demigods and, and, and all of the different species come into existence but then when the Mahavishnu uh, breathes in then everything comes back in again and is absorbed within him and so Prabhupada quotes this verse from the Bhagavad Gita Bhutva Bhutva Praliyate So, we're recommended to transcend, rise above this, these interactions of the material energy and reawaken our original identity. Jivera Swarupa Hoi Nichere Krishna Das. We're not the body, we're spirit soul and the qualification or the qualities of the living entity uh, uh, that he is a servant. We are always a servant. At the moment, we are serving the false identification with the body, serving the mind and the senses. Manasastan Indriyani. Prakriti stan karshati. We're struggling 
with the material energy. But it is recommended that instead of serving the mind and the senses, we learn to serve Krishna. And so Prabhupada says here at the end of the purport, the time factor is the impersonal representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who gives the living entities, that's us, conditioned by material nature, a chance to emerge from this nature by surrendering to him. So, rather than being a servant of the mind and the senses, we are recommended to serve Krishna. And the Lord is kind enough to give us that opportunity when we come into the association of the Vaishnavas, of the devotees. Otherwise, how else are we to know that we are not the body, that we are spiritual by nature? It's not uh, until, at least for me, uh, and it wasn't until I met uh, a devotee that these things were clearly explained. The process of surrender is learnt by the association of the bhaktas. If we want bhakti, we can only get bhakti from the bhaktas, from those who have bhakti. And uh, by that association, we get to associate with the scripture and our spiritual master. And by learning how to serve Krishna, by serving his devotees, by serving the instructions of the scripture, one can... <coughs> gain a proper understanding of one's real identity instead of being bewildered by the swirl of the material energy we can observe it and understand it's Krishna's Krishna working in the form of the time factor and that I'm separate from it happiness distress this all come about as a result of identification with the body. The body is an imposition that's forced upon us uh, uh, by the influence of the time factor. <clears throat> so one has to learn to step back and observe oneself as the uh, proprietor of the body but not the body our, 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 yes we are the body but at the same time we're not the body this is a achincha abeda beda tattva we are forced to endure and to experience the changes of the body but at the same time by the cultivation of spiritual knowledge and spiritual practice, we can directly perceive that we're not the body. We can directly perceive our spiritual identity and the characteristics or the features, the, the, the quality, um, main characteristic of that identity, at least initially, is to understand that we're servants. That we're servants of the Lord and we're servants of the devotees. Mm. Okay, so I think I'll finish here. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Yes, 
Speak loudly, please. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. As you mentioned that we should be uh, observing the time factor. Yeah. So that means brooding about the past. Then how do we avoid like this brooding about the past? What, what about the past? Sometimes we uh, are lost in the thoughts of the past that, yeah, okay, yeah. I did this mistake, yeah. I did that mistake. And so observing the time factor means exactly what? Observing what the time about? factor means exactly what? Hmm. Good question. Understanding that it, the, the features, the experiences, the pleasures, right, which we want, right, and the pain, which we want to avoid, is all temporary, right? It's all temporary. There is enjoyment in the material world, right? <clears throat> but it's faulty, right? Because of its temporality, right? Prabhupada mentions, though, that the evidence of enjoyment in the material world is an indication or a uh, um, what's the word um, direction that there is a place where there is enjoyment, real enjoyment and permanent enjoyment uh, what's the example that Srila Prabhupada gives very often about enjoyment in the material world. What is it like? A mirage, yes. <clears throat> um, in uh, Australia, where I come from, in the summertime when it gets very hot, you know, 40 degrees, you can be driving on a country road and then off in the distance you'll see a mirage and it looks like water, right? But as you drive towards it, it keeps on moving, it keeps on going away. So the mirage is not real, but the water that it appears to be is real. So similarly also, the enjoyment that we experience in material existence, whilst it's temporary and so therefore illusory, indicates that there is a place where one can enjoy permanently. That's the spiritual realm. So, uh, we can observe the comings and goings of material existence and understand that the material world is a reflection of the spiritual realm, right? And that the relationships and the experiences, the enjoyment that we experience in material existence, but which is contaminated by, this, by these imperfections, is um, an indication of the spiritual realm, the realm of permanence. And so by observing what goes on in material existence and understanding the influence of the time factor and understanding the, the, the impermanence, but seeing in it also the reflection, the imperfect reflection of the permanent spiritual world gives us an opportunity to um, uh, reflect and meditate on that 
on the reality rather than on the um, the false or the the impermanent. So. Um, Uh, it, it, it means understanding the working of the time factor and seeing what it's actually doing and, and uh, appreciating that this is Krishna right? in a form of the time factor, creating things, destroying things, maintaining things. giving us an opportunity to understand how it is working, giving us the association of the devotees, learning to see things from the point of view of the Shastra, Shastra Chakshush. So being able to see things through the vision of the Mahajans and through the vision of the Shastra so that we can understand our permanent identity and detach ourselves from the impermanent moving of material energy. How does that sound? Theoretical, but that's what we have to do in practice. And so that's, that's why, you know, we become absorbed in our service. You know, it's not that we just sit around all day and just watch everything moving. You know, don't do anything. Huh? We are able to identify ourselves by doing service. Right? That's our, by engaging, by surrendering, basically. Prabhupada says we're not armchair philosophers, but we're practical doers. Right? We, like, we do things. And in the process of engaging in our sadhana and uh, in our seva, then we're able to then also be somewhat introspective. Right? It's, it's, it's what we cultivate um, in our sadhana practice. Okay, anything else? Okay. Who's feeling hungry? One more question. Prabhuji, so you mentioned that we will uh, develop this vision, this vision that uh, we are separate from this body. Yeah. So this vision will be developed by our spiritual advancement or only by our mere choice we can select that. By just reading, we will be able to discriminate that I am not this body, like it goes difficult even though we know, but it becomes difficult for us to uh, have this understanding. So it is, question is, is it our choice that will give us this vision that I want to see things uh, differently or spiritual advancement as I make, I will be able to distinguish matter and spirit? Both. Both. It's, it's, we're making a conscious choice now to surrender to Krishna, right? That's why we're here in the, in the ashram. That's why we wake up early in the morning, right? There's an example in a third canto of the Bhagavatam which mentions that uh, devotional service dissolves the false ego, ahankara, like um, our digestion um, uh, uh, absorbs what we eat for breakfast, right? And it's something that occurs automatically, right? When you have breakfast, you get up and do your seva, but you don't have to worry about digesting your breakfast, right? It happens automatically, right? So self-realization comes about when we engage in the process of devotion and we do that by 
conscious decision, right? And then automatically, as we're engaged in the in the seva, in the service, and that means shravanam, kirtanam, Vishnu smaranam, you know, all of the different activities that we perform. By the performance of all of those activities, gradually, we're uh, our, our, our identity is revealed to us by Krishna. Right? So it's a combination of both. It's the, the decision that we make, but also the reciprocation that Krishna gives to the devotee as he surrenders. Yeyatamma Right? As they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. So as we surrender to Krishna, following the instructions of the, of, of the devotees, following the instructions of the Shastra, following the instructions of the Guru, then as we show our sincerity and our um, strength of purpose, then Krishna reveals. Right? Um, was that nine? I hope so. Um, uh, what is it? Raja Vidya? Raja Guhyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam. So the, 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 this is the, the king of education, right? Prabhupada says emperor knowledge, actually, right? So, and Pavitram Idam Uttamam is above material existence. Pratyak Shavagamam Damyam. It's directly perceived. Right? We, we directly perceive that we're not the body. It's revealed to us. And in symptoms of you know, self-realization, what's one? Uh, susukam, happiness. Right? Susukam kata mavyayam. So, um, yeah, it requires our endeavor which means our surrender and then as we surrender then Krishna reciprocates and he gives right I give them desham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti puravakam dadami buddhi jogam tam yenamam Yeah. I give them the understanding by which they can come to me. Tesham eva mukam patam. I dwelling within the hearts destroy the darkness of material existence out of compassion, right? For them. So as we as we serve, Krishna reveals. Or as we surrender, then Krishna reveals himself. And initially, self-realization means we understand that we're not the body, that we're spiritual by nature. Spiritual by nature means a servant. And that gradually is revealed to us. You experience that, don't you? Don't you? Not sure. Must be. Must be. We must be experiencing it. Otherwise, why are we here? Right? To some degree. One, to some degree or another, we must be experiencing this. When you're chanting Hare Krishna, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel when you chant Hare Krishna? What? How do you feel? He feels blissful. What about you fellows? 
You're just doing it because you're told to, huh? Huh? We like to chant Hare Krishna because it makes us happy. Do you feel happy? Yeah? Maybe? Huh? One thing, one thing about um, one of the one of the unique features of of uh, Vedic culture is that one generally puts aside one's personal feelings and surrenders basically everything for the good of the family or the, for the good of the country or for the good of God, right? And so, you know, one's personal feelings aren't even considered. So I notice this in India if I ask people, how does that make you feel? They go, oh, feel? Am I supposed to feel? But it's okay to feel. <laughs> it's okay to have feelings. And, you know, why do we chant Hare Krishna? Why do you chant Hare Krishna? Huh? Makes you good, feel good. Because huh? that's, that's the nature of the soul. When we chant Hare Krishna, we uncover our spiritual identity. And so what happens? We, we, we start to dance. Huh? We start to, you know, feel happy. Huh? And, you know, we don't have to drink anything or smoke anything or whatever to feel happy. We just chant Hare Krishna and we feel happy. And symptom of that is we, we move around. Huh? So that's a reciprocation from Krishna that we're able to identify on a spiritual platform with our spiritual selves. Right? So even so, it's, it's a simple thing, chanting Hare Krishna. Very simple thing, but has immense potency. Huh? What's it, what does it say in the success to come? Uh, Nam nam makari bahu daha nija sarva shaktis. Right? Sarva shakti. Oh shakti. Lord Chaitanya says this. All of my shakti is in my name. Or Krishna says. Right? So when we chant Hare Krishna, we experience our spiritual identity when we, we start dancing. We start, we feel happy. Because that's, what we are. By nature, we are ananda. Right? So that's, how, that's one way how we experience uh, this process directly. Huh? Directly. And become happy. And then we feel, when we're chanting Hare Krishna, we feel, I'm not this body. I'm in the body, but I'm not the body. If you're lucky. Right? If you're surrendering, if you render some service to Krishna, and we're rendering service to Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna, then he reciprocates by enlivening us and by giving us an understanding of, you know, what's the next step in, my, in the process of surrender? What's the next step? The next step in the process of surrender, what is it? Prasadam Sevaya. <laughs> okay. Gwantaraj Simad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gora Bhaktapindi Ki Jai.